Hello students, welcome back to the course on organizational behavior, individual dynamics in organization. So in module 4, we were looking into affect and emotions. We moved to the third lecture of module 4, where we specifically look into one of the most important topics of the entire course, which is emotional intelligence. Now it's not only relevant because of organizational behavior, a person, an individual needs to have emotional intelligence, there is no doubt about it. This lecture will give you some insights both from industry as well as from the uh, empirical research that has happened in and around the, the topic of emotional intelligence. So let's look into the lecture. I'm Dr. Abraham Sillaisek. I'm an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So today's theme uh, would be intuition suggests people who can detect emotions in others, control their own emotions and handle social interactions will have a powerful leg up in the business world. So the relevance of emotional intelligence is what is being underscored in this particular theme. So this will be the theme in and around we'll be focusing today. So let's understand what do you mean by emotional intelligence. Now, there's no doubt on there is no lack of understanding on what intelligence is. But let's understand what is emotional intelligence. Earliest use of emotional intelligence, the word emotional intelligence in the contemporary times happened in the Peter Salovey and John Mayer uh, work, the study where it looked into emotional intelligence specifically. They, they actually defined emotional intelligence in their work in imagination, cognition and personality in 1990. So that's where the, the frequent use of emotional intelligence or uh, the, the usage of EI into the, the emotion or the affect parallels has come into existence. That's from 1990. Daniel Goldman in 1995, uh, popularized the term uh, through the book Emotional Intelligence, why it is more than IQ. So there, there uh, a comparison between IQ and how it is much, much more superior than the existing understanding of intelligence, which is IQ, has come up uh, in greater detail in 1995. Emotional intelligence is nothing but the ability to detect and manage emotional cues and information. I repeat, emotional cues and information. So, so when we look into emotional intelligence, we have to understand that it is essentially a sort of a, a reaction towards whatever emotional cues are being there in the environment. It could be with respect to others and it could be with respect to ourselves. In the previous lecture, I had categorically insisted on one aspect that is when you are looking into affect, when you are looking, in, looking into emotion, we have to look it from the bi-directional perspective, not only from ours but also from others' point of view. So let's understand this typical example uh, of Saumya to have a, a detailed uh, uh, you know, understanding of what EI or emotional intelligence specifically is. Now Saumya is an office manager. Her awareness of her own and others' emotion. So this is where a point which I always uh, try to underline. Her own emotions as well as others' emotions. So every single lecture in, uh, in, in terms of uh, emotion or in terms of affect, uh, I categorically state this, that there has to be this bi-directional perspective in every single aspect of emotion. So uh, when you look into Saumya being an office manager, her awareness of her own and others' emotions is almost nil. She is moody and unable to generate much enthusiasm or interest in her employees. She doesn't understand why employees get upset with her. She often overreacts to problems and chooses the most ineffectual responses to emotional situations. So when you look into a situation where Saumya is and what her behavior or behavioral responses are, including ineffectual responses to emotional situations, we can categorically say that Saumya has low emotional intelligence. Now emotional intelligence EI is a person's ability to perceive emotions in the self and others. Again, the point which I always repeat. Second, understand the meaning of these emotions. So it's not only 
with respect to perceiving the emotions in ourselves and others but also it includes a detailed understanding of what do you mean by those emotions. See mere, un, mere uh, perceiving of the emotion is not enough. You have to understand what those emotions are and finally regulate one's emotions accordingly. So this warrants a small discussion here. When you are looking into emotional intelligence per se, there are people who can perceive others' emotions. Let's understand this through example. There are people who feel that, okay, I'm, I'm empathetic to that person or rather I'm sympathetic to that person. So there are, there are certain uh, aspects which disclose that the individual who could be your colleague, who could be your, uh, the, your boss or your subordinate, they are perceiving a certain emotion of yours or maybe some other uh, co-worker. That said, they are unable to understand the mere existence of that particular emotion. What warranted it or what are the antecedents of those particular emotions or why the person is behaving or reciprocating with a certain emotion? Did something in you actually trigger that emotional response? So all these aspects are critical when it comes to emotional intelligence. It's not mere perceiving of the person's emotion. Rather, they are going one step ahead that is to understand why the emotion, it could be in, with respect to oneself also. If there is, let's say you are uh, seeing an extremely happy reaction to a particular job done. Now you are perceiving that others are happy, other team members are happy because of, let's say, you are stunning contribution to the team. But also understand that this happiness could be a stepping stone to the next aspect rather than stopping your, your effort there. It should be a motivator for you to continuously keep on working and reach to the ultimate target set by the group before enjoying or before celebrating your, your small successes. So this could be the cue. This is the environmental cue or this is the emotional cue which you should be able to decipher. This, which you should be able to understand. So not only perceiving the emotion, it is also with respect to understanding the emotion and the third important aspect is regulating one's emotion. So let's say if I am particularly sad that my, let's say my uh, boss or my superior, my uh, reporting authority did not acknowledge the hard work I did. I did not get the recognition I, I, I had to uh, get because of that particular work I had done. But then you are in a workplace. If you are expressing your sorrow, if you are expressing your depression, it might lead to or it might reflect that you are or reflect you in a poor light. So there are enormous possibilities of you to behave in a way which whereby not suppressing your emotion but also trying to make others not get into your nerve. So that is a, a tricky situation but you have to be able to regulate the emotion which is at play. So this makes you highly emotionally intelligent. So there are three aspects specifically with respect to EI. You have to first and the foremost thing you have to understand. You have to, you have to perceive. You have to perceive that there is emotion either at play from the, the other party or from yourself. There is this emotion on the table, whatever it is. Second, you have to understand what is the reason or what are the antecedents or why this is warranted or why this is there in the first place. And third, the most important aspect, you should be able to regulate the particular emotion. See, many a time it is understood and it is said that in organizations, people who are capable to use their emotions to the best possible way, they are the most successful individual. So this makes the concept of emotional intelligence itself very critical. So I hope that with this example and with this clear definition and arrangement or uh, clear with this clear definition, I hope there is a certain understanding of the concept of emotional intelligence. When you look into people who know their own emotions specifically and are good at reading emotional cues, for instance, knowing that uh, when they are angry or uh, how to express themselves without violating the norms are most likely to be effective. When you are looking into individuals who, who, who want to be 
you know who who are angry they want to show their anger in effect uh, you know effectively they want to display let's say their happiness but without offending anybody they want to be sarcastic without again offending anybody or there might be situations where you are sad you are depressed but you are not letting the whole team make a conclusion that he is very moody or he gets sad or he gets depressed easily so all these aspects actually lead to what is known as emotional intelligence so how you actually regulate your emotions is becoming the key aspect when it comes to emotional intelligence let's quickly look into a cascading model of emotional intelligence which i've taken from the textbook conscientiousness will lead to perceive emotions in self and others which can lead to understanding the meaning of emotions which is more cognitive in nature if you look into the cognitive aspect it is more of understanding when it comes to the third element of regulating the emotions it is more of emotional stability so this is where you are not only guided by the emotion at workplace you are also employing the cognitive element into uh the particular understanding of the emotion or understanding the meaning of emotion why the emotion has been there in the first place why it has uh, turned out to be a different emotion maybe in that particular case and how effectively you can regulate the emotion is being guaranteed by your emotional stability so this is what emotional intelligence is all about now let's look into some of the arguments that moves around or that has been there in existence with respect to some of the the classical research studies that have happened in in and around emotional intelligence let's look into the different arguments in favor of ai in favor of uh, which are in in uh, against uh, ai so all these aspects will will look into in detail from a empirical research point of view so it it has an intuitive appeal the first argument is that emotional intelligence is desirable and appreciated there is no doubt about it every single individual if he is not having sufficient ei he will be looked in as a, 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 a individual who is not fit for the organization we have a detailed discussions in in po person organization fit as well as person job fit so you will get a more of clarity there when it comes to the fitment with the job and the fitment with the organization but that said ei is desirable and appreciated there is no denying the fact when you look into intuition it suggests people who can detect emotions in others control their own emotions and handle social interactions will have a powerful leg up in the business world which is ultimately our theme of this lecture so if you are in a position to actually understand your emotions basically first you have to detect your emotions second you are able to understand and regulate your emotions you are going up there is no doubt about it partners in a multinational consulting firm who scored above the median on an ei measure delivered 1.2 million usd more in business than did the other partners so this is the relevance of ei in terms of the intuitive appeal which emotion or emotional intelligence has this is the relevance of ei specifically in the organization this is the relevance of ei in terms of your uh, revenue in terms of the organizational performance in general now emotional intelligence predicts the criteria that matter when you look into emotional intelligence and different arguments in favor of emotional intelligence there is a certain appeal associated with emotional intelligence we have seen that there is no doubt about it it is it is more or at par with our our own intelligence or what our own understanding about intelligence and it is looked as the desirable aspect an individual needs to have within an organization when you look into ai specifically evidence suggests that a high level of emotional intelligence means a person will perform well on the job now this is becoming very critical not only the appeal towards emotional intelligence is based on uh, the ability to perceive understand and regulate the emotion rather it has a clear consequence which is performance on the job now the study has also found that the ability to recognize 
emotions in others facial expressions and to pick up subtle signals about people's emotions predicted peer ratings of how valuable people were to their particular organization so there is a clear understanding of how effective an individual is in the organization for the organization then the relevance of emotional intelligence cannot be uh, undermined in a study emotional intelligence weekly but consistently correlated with the job performance so there are evidences even after researchers took cognitive ability like conscientiousness and neuroticism into account so when you look into certain empirical research and the references will be shared what you understand with respect to empirical uh, understanding of emotional intelligence is that emotional intelligence has a clear correlation with respect to the performance so if an emotionally intelligent individual is there in the organization his or her performance would be a tad better than others this is what a general conclusion we can make on when it comes to emotional intelligence now this is not a new understanding if you are part of any organization if you have been working or if you are associated or your discussion with your friends who are being in the workforce will definitely authorize the statement that you as an individual will per, will have a better performance if you are able to perceive the emotion understand the emotion and regulate the emotion for the benefit of yours it's not that it is the only thing there are other factors which definitely makes the individual a success in the organization but that said emotional intelligence happens to be one of the most important aspect it happens to be one of the most critical aspects in an organization now let's look into the biological connect of emotional intelligence because we have looked into the appeal the affinity the attraction towards ei we have also looked into the uh, the correlation it has with respect to the performance we now look into emotional intelligence and the biological connect in one study particularly people with damage to the brain area that governs emotional processing that governs emotional processing part of the prefrontal cortex scored no lower on standard measures of intelligence than people without similar damage so you have a clear understanding of what the 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 relevance of your biological setup has on emotional intelligence but they scored significantly lower on ei test because the area was damaged and were impaired in normal decision making as demonstrated by the poor performance in a card game with monetary rewards so when you are looking into situations of um, ei where you have a, a problem or a damage to the brain area that governs the emotional processing part of the prefrontal cortex your performance has deteriorated no doubt about it as per this study this study he also suggests ei emotional intelligence is neurologically based in a way that's unrelated to standard measures of intelligence however this is a debatable whether it emotional intelligence can be trained into people so when you look into situations like this there could be a debate there could be a discussion that whether emotional intelligence ei is a, a a concept or is an is a skill which could be trained into people there are people who tell that they can do it there are people who are against it it is as good as a nature versus not a debate no doubt about it but the fact of the matter is that ei is biologically based as per the different studies these are few studies that i have i have uh, tried to illustrate here there are critical evidences which suggest that emotional intelligence has a biological connect no doubt about it now ei researchers have even after so much of research they have not come to a conclusive definition of what emotional intelligence is we have tried to give you some of under, some of the understanding with respect to the most prominent research that has happened in the area most seminal papers we have taken to uh, construe or to to call out a particular uh, definition of ei but the truth is that there is no particular or no one correct definition for ei when you look into emotional intelligence too many researchers have worked on it and it's not clear what emotional intelligence is because researchers 
categorically use different definitions of the construct. Some researchers have focused on emotional intelligence via test and wrong answers scoring the ability to recognize and control emotions. So this is more of an ability based perspective on EI, ability based perspective on EI, whereas other studies have focused on emotional intelligence as a broad variety of constructs that can be measured by let us say self reports and are connected primarily by the fact that they are not redundant with cognitive intelligence. So there are different perspectives one could be with respect to the knowledge or understanding of it as ability based perspective, another could be with respect to much similar to the cognitive intelligence where the, you can actually understand and measure it with respect to the self report. But that said the whole problem with this uh, multifarious type of understanding is that because of uh, EI researchers do not agree on definitions. Another critical aspect when it comes to emotional intelligence is that it can't be measured. Because emotional intelligence is a form of intelligence, critics argue that there must be a right and wrong answers for it on test. If you look into personality tests also the factor remains the same. Any, any particular latent variable will have such issues and specifically when it comes to EI, some tests do have right and wrong answers although the validity of some questions are critically doubtful. So the measures of EI are diverse and researchers have not subjected them to as much rigorous study as they have measures of uh, let us say personality and general intelligence. So the validation is still pending because it could emanate or this problem could actually emanate from the basic fact that uh, the, the researchers are still not able to uh, converse to a particular definition and make EI as a single concept and try to understand EI from that. Now EI is nothing but personality with a different label that is a certain understanding other people have. Some critics argue that because EI is so closely related to intelligence and personality, once you control for these factors specifically intelligence and personality, it has nothing unique to offer. So they are of the opinion that EI is nothing but your intelligence and personality at play but that is far from truth if you go into the actual research. But again we have to understand, we have to take the negative side, we have to understand what the critics are telling. If EI is actually correlated to the measures of personality then the evidence for a biological component to EI is spurious because you are trying to relate it with personality and that will have a little bit of con you know uh, conflict with biological uh, component and biological markers like brain activity and heritability are attributable to other well known and much better research psychological construct but not EI. Now to some extent researchers have resolved this issue by noting that EI is a construct partially determined by traits like uh, cognitive intelligence, conscientiousness and even neuroticism. So there is valuable or inseparable connect between the personality factor or personality dimensions and EI. So this makes the study or this makes uh, the understanding that EI is nothing but uh, an extension maybe of a personality aspect or maybe with respect to uh, an, an aspect in intelligence. So this is again the opinion of critics which does not stand or does not have a validity of its own but we have to understand what is what are the criticism uh, hovering around emotional intelligence. Now let us look into emotion regulation. We have uh, tried to understand what EI is, we have tried to understand how things are perceived with respect to EI. We have to understand emotion regulation from that point of view. Identifying and modifying emotions that one feels. This is regulation, how you control, how you mitigate or how you uh, try to manipulate, though it is a negative term, but how you try to regulate or monitor that is becoming critical when it comes to emotion regulation. Thinking about more pleasant things like suppressing negative thoughts and distancing oneself from uh, reappraising the particular situation 
or engaging in relaxation techniques are some of the aspects. Let's say I want, I'm, I'm working in a very negative environment and I want to be happy. I want to induce a level of happiness in other words, I want to regulate my emotions. What I do is I can take away my mind to a different setting altogether. I can think or start thinking of pleasant things that have happened in my life or maybe in a day, what are pleasant things I can I can just scan through. It, it keeps on changing my emotions. I can try to deliberately try to suppress a negative thoughts. Think of positive aspects. Think of the blessings you have. Think of the good things that you did and you got or you received. Uh, as a return, distancing yourself from negative negative thoughts or engaging in more, more, more of relaxation techniques. You tend to, you know, relax, you tend to uh, bring your, uh, you know, negative thoughts down, try to seemingly look into positive thoughts, try to bring in uh, more of uh, thoughts which are positive or motivating or encouraging. So changing your emotion is not easy. It takes effort. There is no doubt about it. And this effort can be exhausting. That makes EI altogether very critical and very uh, a process which is not so easy if you want to train. When there are people who say that emotional intelligence is again just a concept or just, a, just an aspect which could be trained. There are some trainers who emerge as trainers of emotional intelligence. The problem with that is changing the emotion, not like the attitude, but changing the emotion is also a relatively tough aspect or a tough process altogether. It takes effort. It takes a lot, of, a lot of effort and this could be exhausting which can make the emotion regulation not an easy task. So emotion regulation need not be a cup of tea for every single individual. It could be that some people are highly capable to do that. They even though in the midst of you might have seen you, you take an example from your own workplace. Some of the people are always very cheerful, joyful. They are very happy. They might be facing the hardest of the hard times in their life. They might be facing one of the most difficult uh, phases in, the, in their career. They might have uh, you know, problems personal with respect to health or with respect to other aspects. But that said, they are always able to put a cheerful smile. They are always uh, able to be cheerful, happy amongst those negative or dark circumstances. This is because they are able to control or they are they are capable to, to for emotional regulation. They are capable to regulate their emotions and that is not an easy task. When you look into emotion per se, we had a detailed understanding of effect and emotions in the previous two lectures. This is a continuation where I tried to focus on emotion particularly with respect to the different empirical research work that has happened. We have looked into what EI is specifically, what, uh, what are the different aspects related to or what are the different arguments in favor and against EI. We have looked into the criticism specifically. We have not ignored that. That said, when you look into emotional intelligence as a concept, whatever problems it is having, we have seen that it does not have a definition. It does not have a clear understanding in terms of the, the research that has happened. Whatever is said in research, but there is a point that is categorically important when it comes to EI, which is emotional intelligence is vital in an organization. You see a successful person within an, within an organization, no doubt, the person is having a relatively better uh, ability to uh, control his emotion, regulate his emotion. You look, you must have looked into individuals who are successful in terms of not only their performance, but also in terms of taking the team together. That is because they are able to perceive the emotions in workplace. They are able to understand those emotions clearly. And if it is emanating from them or from others, they are able to regulate the emotions in a proper manner. That's the understanding you should take away from this particular lecture. Thank you for listening to me patiently. We'll see you in the next lecture. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.